Welcome back to the Sportsmax Zone. Trinidad and Tobago's national senior men's football team, the Soka Warriors, face a tough challenge ahead of their upcoming CONCACAF Nations League B Group C fixtures just under two months from now. The Soka Warriors are scheduled to continue their campaign away to the Bahamas on March 24 and at home to Nicaragua on the 27th. But given the absence of local football in Trinidad and Tobago since the onset of the COVID-19 in 2020, local players have not seen any action, placing them at a disadvantage where selection to the squad is concerned. A disheartened head coach, Angus Eve, spoke about the issue on Wednesday. He said the guys here are a bit disadvantaged with the opportunities to make the team. So what we're doing along with the TTFA Normalization Committee we carried a plan to them to get these guys fit enough and get a couple of matches in before February month end so that they can have an opportunity to address the selections to be a part of the team come March. Eve also expressed his desire for more support, especially when it comes on to. He said, I wish that football people could really come together. This is our country. If John is coaching the team, support John. Support the effort because when we win, it's not John wins, it's Trinidad and Tobago wins. I would like to see that we really come together and work together and get football back to where we think it should be. Well, joining us now via Zoom to discuss the issue further is Director of Communications at the TNT Football Association, Sean Fuentes. Good afternoon, Sean. Good afternoon, Maria. How are you? I'm doing well. Hope all is good with you too. Um, let's start by just, you know, maybe you can share with our viewers just um, a picture of what's going on with Trinidad and Tobago and local football because Coach Angus Eve seems a bit, you know, upset with the state of affairs. Yeah, that's correct. Um, what, I, what can I say? It's not all gloom and doom. Um, I think there's a glimmer of hope for Trinidad and Tobago football. Um, 2022 was definitely an interesting year for us. Uh, a lot of ups and downs, um, you know, the challenges uh, continue and it continues to be a work in progress for Trinidad and Tobago football, not just for 2022, but I think maybe for the last decade or so. If you've looked at, uh, you know, our performances and where we've gone as a footballing nation and as an organization, um, certainly there's a lot to be done, a lot of work to be done. And uh, the restructuring and the rebranding of Trinidad and Tobago football um, is on an ongoing basis. And uh, we are hoping that you know, seeing that we're coming off a World Cup, which I think has inspired and opened the eyes and ears of a lot of people who are involved in football, not just in Trinidad and Tobago, but in the Caribbean, that um, hopefully, it's, hopefully it's going to be the dawn of a, of a new era for us. Um, 2022 is going to be very critical for Trinidad and Tobago football for obvious reasons. Um, you know, we're still under a normalization committee, and I think a lot of people are banking and seeing that Trinidad and Tobago football at least gets a respectable position. We have the, the Nations League qualifiers, um, Gold Cup qualifiers as well. That is going to have an effect on how we are seeded for the World Cup qualifiers for 2026. So it's very important that we do well. And then across the board as well, you have the different new teams as well as the women's qualifiers taking place in 2023. Critical year for us. Right, but two months before the Nations League, which is a big, big deal for Trinidad and Tobago, and you know, no sort of local football being played in the country, it puts our footballers at a disadvantage. Yeah, clearly, especially when you look at the, some of the other islands, and in particular Jamaica, who have had domestic football ongoing for the last year or more. And in Trinidad and Tobago, you know, the Normalization Committee and the TTFA have made and are making concerted efforts to get this national elite league off the ground in collaboration with the government and the Ministry of Sport. Um, however, a set date for, for the commencement of this league has not been established as yet, and uh, the FA continues to make efforts to get not just the National Domestic League, but at least the youth leagues up and running. I think the only vibrant and uh, operative league that we've had in Trinidad and Tobago for the last three to four years has been the Secondary Schools Football League. Other than that, we've had you know short-term leagues for two and three months, like the Ascension Leagues, that has have a lot of players an opportunity to get some playing time. Um, we have the regional association leagues, but that's like minor football, minor league football, which is not, you know, efficient and sufficient for our footballers at this point in time. Yeah, especially with the level that we're hoping to get to. Coach also mentioned, you know, the constitution, Trinidad and Tobago, that of course, um, he feels puts the 
the program, the entire football program, at a disadvantage because we can only bring in foreign players that have parents that are Trinis, if I'm to say so. So if your grandparent is a Trini, you can't play for Trinidad and Tobago. And of course, you know, this is another thing hampering. What's your thought on what Coach had said about that? Well, what I can tell you is that I think um, today's seeing the reactions, I think he was a bit misunderstood in terms of people who were saying that he has uh, branded the, the local players um, not as good um, to represent the country. I don't think he's saying that. What he's saying is that there have been players dating back to 2006 World Cup qualification who have been eligible to play for Trinidad and Tobago and have been playing at a high level, but we've not been able to secure their Trinidad and Tobago passport for that reason that you explained a short while ago. And currently we do have at least a handful or at least a dozen players who are playing in top tiers across Europe and other parts of the, of the world who we are unable to get access to. And then when you look at other countries that we're going to be competing with right in the Caribbean, as well as other countries in Europe and South America who have been able to tap into this network um, to have players represent uh, their, their particular countries um, based on uh, grand, having their grandparents being born in, um, in their respective countries, etc. And now uh, that is a problem that has plagued us for quite some time. Um, and I mean, it, it kind of narrows our opportunity to expand that player pool and uh, to have access to players. As a matter of fact, I can tell you that we have a, a particular player who is affiliated with the Chelsea team right now. Um, he's in the youth division in the youth academy, but doing very well. And uh, we are unable to invite him to play for Trinidad and Tobago because his mom or dad is not uh, of direct Trinidad and Tobago heritage. Sean, the issue I have w w with this is that, you know, when I see the head coach speak of lack of support and the words he used and uh, the body language that he was speaking with, I was saying to myself, well, it appears as if this is a man who's not had direct communication with his bosses at the normalization committee to understand and accept the situation and then act accordingly. And, 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 and I sense and smell a, a disconnect between the normalization committee directing the football and the man who's in charge of keeping the national senior men's program together. I wouldn't want to go as far as saying that there's a disconnect, George. Or what I can tell you is that I know he and his staff, they probably a bit frustrated um, you know, over the last few months or so. We have not had much activities at the international level. The last outing we would have had uh, was a way to Thailand, which was at least two to three months ago. We were hoping to secure a couple of friendlies in that December period as well, um, which, which did not come true. Of course, you know, um, the financial issues that, that continue to plague the TTFA, it's having an effect on all our, our various programs. Um, you've had the, the issue with the creditors as well that put a cloud over the, the football over the past uh, month or so, um, and we are now working tirelessly to try to push these things aside and allow you know the, the business of football and the football on the pitch to take to be the first priority. And I think hopefully within the next month or so, um, as I mentioned, it's going to be very critical. And um, we are hoping to secure some international friendlies of for the men's senior team before we play in Nicaragua and Bahamas. It's going to be very important for yeah. that. But from what I can tell you, um, I know the normalization committee, in particular the chairman, has been having discussions um, with Angus and his team over the past few weeks trying to put things in place. But I think on both sides, there's a bit of frustration because things are not ironing out. Yeah, as but, but, but the, only, the only thing wrong with that, though, Sean, is that it, it, it doesn't appear as if Angus Eve and his team, or Angus Eve, had that discussion or had those discussions and then there was a reconciled position to say, look, Angus, we are being delayed with playing local football because of this. And so, well, you know, I wish that weren't so, but I accept it. And we can't get friends because of these things. All right, you know, I don't accept that, but it is what it is. And then he is speaking out about that kind of frustration. The frustration is, is that he, 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 he's just out there asked to shape a program, asked to prepare a team, asked to bring local footballers up to the standard required to compete at the international level, and he doesn't know where he's to turn for the assurance about how he's going to get things together. And that's the issue I have because, again, remember, are we looking on from here? You have the journalist, the journalist perspective as well, Sean. You've been doing this a long time. What we see is a man who is not being communicated with clearly about the lay of the land, and so he's moved to air his grouses, perhaps to inspire his bosses to do something or to at least say something to him. Yeah, and I have to tend to agree with you there. But what I would say is I think the issue with Angus, based on what I'm seeing, um, being on the inside as well, is that 
he has been communicated with, but I think ever so often, I think every two to three months, he's been communicated with the same message, um, it, with the hope that things are going to improve. And, uh, you know, he understands that we have some restrictions, uh, a bit of lack of resources as well, that he doesn't have, you know, that, that exposure or, or to his disposal, what you would expect a national men's team preparing for a World Cup qualifier and for World Cup qualifiers to have at his disposal. And every two to three months, maybe it's the same narrative um, I'm being uh, relayed to him. And I think to that extent, that's maybe a bit of frustration on his side creeping up and saying, well, you know, we've been told the same thing over and over, but I understand that this is what we have to work with and we're going to give it our best shot. I think um, I have to give credit to him because he was the, the, the one that came out in December and said, hey, if we're not going to have international matches, at least I want to be able to have training camps with my home base players. And from there, hopefully, with the turn of the new chapter in 2023, things are hopefully going to get better. Time will tell. Yeah, I have a couple of tough questions for you, though, Sean. And uh, as the information... Um, manager for the TNT Football Federation, um, I, I guess it's your duty to present a, a positive, um, positive image. But things I'm aren't good. Well, yeah, th th things aren't good. We, let, let me start with the normalization committee because when the normalization committee was applied, it should have been no more than for two years. There was a, an extension of a, of a further year so we are now set to have the normalization committee end in March of this year. So it probably has two and a half months left. Is that on target or may we hear that it's going to be in place for a longer time? Because I think there are a lot of football people in Trinidad and Tobago who want to see the back of the normalization committee. The wood on the ground, um, as you would have seen as well, based on some of the media reports, is that I think the membership is saying that they believe that the time is right for them to take charge of, of football again. Yeah. But on the, on the flip side of that, um, Lance, I think the normalization committee has reached a point where um, for much of the, the duration of their tenure so far, they don't think that they were given, given um, I shouldn't say sufficient time, but yeah, the enough support um, and maybe resources to, to put the Trinidad and Tobago Football Association into a place that they believe that they have the potential to do. And I think when you look at that, I think they're hoping that uh, they're maybe saying that they need more time to really complete the job or complete the mission that they believe that they're, they're able to. Yeah. How that goes, time will tell because it means that, and Angus mentioned this yesterday, it means that from both sides, you have to have the, the people coming together and a more collective effort and a better understanding to say, yeah. this is the direction we need to go. This yeah. is what's going to happen and we need to maybe understand that. But yeah. again, um, you've seen what has played Trinidad and Tobago football over the years. This has, has been happening even before the normalization committee, where you're not, you're not getting the, the masses or yeah. the people that are involved, all the stakeholders to really come together for that one yeah. vision. Yeah, we, we've got to leave it here, but I'm sure, Sean, that you would understand the exasperating frustration that uh, Trinidad and Tobago football fans are, are experiencing, ranked 104 in the world at the moment, outside of the top 100 for such a long time. And they are considered, as eight-time Caribbean champions, the powerhouse of Caribbean football. So the, the, fans, the fans need some, some, some better news and some, some better management of TNT's football. You might not want to admit it wholeheartedly, but I, I, think, I think the fans, the fans, the fans deserve it. You're right. And speaking as a, somebody who works in football, as well as a countryman, as a fan of Trinidad and Tobago, I tend to feel the same. All I can do is hope, Lance, that those of us who are involved in football, yes. we are a lot that we're able to make that effort to get the results on the pitch that would bring back that sort of joy and happiness for our football. All right, Sean, we're, we're anxiously awaiting that because we are huge fans of Trinidad and Tobago's football. Thanks for talking to us. We appreciate that, Lance. Thank and, you. And we have more coming up on the Sportsman Zone after this. Thank you for watching SportsMax on YouTube. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and to click the notification bell to stay informed.